Jake? Well, <clears throat> we had some good news regarding Jake. Um, Jake's got um, the all clear to start training again. So we're going to see how he goes this morning on, on his own with some functional stuff. Um, and hopefully maybe to join in tomorrow. That, I think that's uh, for a young player that's had um, a, a big injury and having been there myself, it, a lot of it comes down to the mind. And um, Jake, is, once he's got the all clear, he can now, uh, you know, pursue obviously stepping up his fitness levels. But he, he's fine. I, I spoke to him at great depth last night about that. And um, I'm delighted with that one. Big Pez is struggling. Um, he's struggling uh, on two fronts really with, with, his, with his ankle. He got a blow on that last week. Um, and the, obviously the, the boys with the illnesses, uh, you know, that's not got any worse. Carl Nix has gone, uh, sorry, it's got worse. Carl Nix has gone down with that today. We're having to keep him away from the players. So we're about, about 10, 11 players short of what we would probably like, really. Jake Spate, has he got half a chance of being on the bench for you then? He might have to be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He might have to be, um, really. It's, not good um, in then terms of numbers. So we're going to, you know, we gave the boys a, um, a good session on Tuesday. They've had a, a day's rest yesterday, and, and they'll work again today and tomorrow. But you know, in the conditions as well, the weather, the rain we've had last night, we've got to make sure the boys are fresh rather than uh, making sure that they're, they're over and not overloading with training. The games have been coming thick and fast. So, and when you've got illnesses and injuries, um, you've got to wrap people up. Of the illness lads, are any of them definitely going to be ruled out apart from Carnes? I'm going to wait and see till the last minute, to be honest, John. But it's not good that they've not trained all week. You know, people like Ron Williams and uh, Jonah will want to, to, to train if they can tomorrow and be part of it. But it, there's no. When you've had uh, an illness all week, it's, it's hard to recover, as we all know, as people. So we, we'll see. We'll judge them up to the last moments. No, struggling. Bruffy, he, he won't train. Um, Again, on two fronts, where he, I mean, the, the kick he got up at, uh, at Gateshead, um, and again, he's another one with the illness, so it's it's not good. So there seems to be that. Even the chairman's got it. So um, we're um, we're down to bare bones in regard in training. Maybe not uh, played before and not seen that much of, obviously, because they've got the connection. Well, they've changed quite a lot. They've changed quite a lot, and and when you change. Um, the momentum coming up can certainly hold you in good stead and I think the teams that have come up, um, they, they went through a good spell, they went through a decent spell and then when you change things dramatically it can, it can plateau and they're obviously finding that plateau now with some of the, the standards that they've set um, but they've got an experienced manager um, and he'll know that and um, I think of all the teams, that, the ones that are sustaining their ability is um, Wimbledon. They've gone for a different type of player um, and a different type of setup, but they've also got good funding at, at Wimbledon. Um, they've got a good fan base. So um, you know, all clubs have been, uh, come up, obviously looking for that sustainability and that. Uh, and Tamworth, I don't believe they'll be in trouble, but I certainly um, feel that out of the three clubs that have come up, Wimbledon will, will achieve the most, and I think Wimbledon will be um, a threat to anybody in the league, um, perhaps other than Oxford. Their squad is pretty much Mansfield Town, ex-players, Mansfield Town reserves. Well, I'm not going to be disrespectful to any. Yeah, of course, you know, but that's through location more than anything, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. You know, um, Michael and Gavin, and the other two chaps, but um, and, and certainly Macca as well, you know. Um, they're, they're good people, they're good lads, and, uh, and I've got respect for them. But, you know, that's football, and you have to move on sometimes. But they're, they're ideal because they're, they live around the, the Birmingham area. Job done? Yes, lovely. Good, thank you. Robert, just wanted to ask you about the league as well. Obviously, we've got this couple coming up, but we're at the halfway point in the season. How sort of pleased are you? So, this is the way you are at this point in the season? Yeah, um, it's, it's, we're, in a, we're in a good position. Um, we could be in a better one uh, because I feel we've dropped points at home in recent weeks. Uh, Histon, Eastbourne, Grays, um, but you know that's that's football. Um, we'll certainly take what we've got so far, and uh, be looking forward to kicking on in in the second half of the season. Okay. A lot of people say you know it's in the second half of the season where you know the clubs with the biggest squads, you know such as perhaps ourselves and the other, the other big clubs.
clubs that you know that's when you can really make a push. Is that something you see as, as being a real positive? Definitely. Um, we start the season well. Um, we've got great foundations um, now to build on, uh, both uh, in a points platform and uh, you know a, a fitness and squad size platform. So uh, there's no reason why uh, second half of the season we can't uh, utilise them and really kick on and push up. Have you had any sort of run in the trophy before? I've got to the semi-final. Yeah. Uh, when I was at Aldershot. Uh, we lost actually to Hensford in the semi-final, which was uh, not a nice experience. But it's uh, you know, as I said, the cup run will help the club. You know, it's it's the chance to get into a final, and get some silverware. That's the main thing that the club obviously wants. So, but um, you know, as I said, we'll just take one game at a time. Tamworth on on Saturday, and then you know we'll beat them and take from there. Hopefully, last weekend. Um that incident just before half time where mm. the guy was deemed to leave with his elbow. I mean that could have changed the game had it been red. And the referees looked at it, thought, was it accidental or did he do it deliberately? I think he did it deliberately. Then he's produced a yellow. I mean that, that was quite a turning point, wasn't it? I think it was, I mean it could have changed, but you know, you could it could have worked against us as well. You see so many times that the team goes down to ten men and they're harder to beat, you know, because they sit behind the ball and you know you've got to work harder to, to break them down. But um, you know, you never know. You know, as I said, we had the chance of Saturday to win it anyway. But you, you just you can't tell if a, if a team goes to ten men, so, but as I said, you got to look at it. The bloke stayed on the pitch, and you know we had the chances to win the game. From a personal point of view, did you think he was going to produce red? I can't remember anything about it, to be honest with you. You know, I mean, I've seen the video, and it does look that he's led with the arm. Um, you know, intended or not, you know, he's led with the arm. And he's caught me in the cheek. Um, luckily, that it didn't cause any more damage to what you know it could have done. You know what you've seen in the past from previous players or whatever. You know the injuries they've sustained yeah. from it. But you know, luckily it wasn't. But intended or not, he, he the, the lad said it wasn't. But you, you never know these days, do you? So, but you kind of got up and dusted yourself down and, and played. Oh, I'm not going to gonna lie. I was a bit groggy, to be honest <laughs> with you. But I mean, do, the, do you remember anything at all about that end of that half and then going down the tunnel? No. No, it's just, you know, as you said, I just got up, got on with it, uh, get through to half time. I think it was only a few minutes. Um, and the gaffer made the decision to take me off. But as I said, sitting in the, the, the physio room, I was feeling groggy. And, you know, the gaffer, th I think, made the right decision. You mentioned about the end of the semi final, mate. I mean, obviously, there's, there's the law of the when, when do we play? Yeah. You know, I mean, this must be the biggest you know, opportunity for players at this level. I mean, you look at the FA Cup, yeah. you, you know, you're obviously never going to get there, but they, this is a good chance, isn't it? But exactly. Any, any chance to play at Wembley, you know, you're going to try and take it, and you know, but that's for every single player. So, you know, everyone's going to up their game with the prospect of playing at Wembley. You know, I'm lucky that I've played there twice, at, you know, in the last couple of seasons. So it's a lovely place to play, but it's horrible there to go and lose. You know, so I mean, if we do get there, then fair enough. But you know, we've got to see it through. There's no point going to Wembley and losing. You don't get anything from that. So hopefully, we'll go there and do the job. But as I said, we've got to beat Tamworth first on thing, and then we've got a couple more games after that. But ultimately, you know, we're looking to win every game. That's, that's the be all and end all. Which are your Wembley appearances? So which are your Wembley appearances? Uh, <laughs> all losses, I'm afraid. <laughs> it was when Exeter lost to Morecambe uh, in the playoff final and Cambridge last year. Uh, when they lost to Torquay. So that's so. motivation in itself. Th hopefully third time lucky, time but I've, I've, I've lost in a quite a few finals and you know, semi-finals, so it's not a good omen, but you know, hopefully I'll win one and hopefully it'll be this season. Mm -hmm. We've obviously seen your ability to, to break into the box, mate, yeah. already. I mean, is that something you think we'll, we'll see more and more, you know, as you build your fitness? Yeah. I understand you're not played that No, much. I mean, it, it's, you know, I didn't, before I come here, I hadn't played for two months. You know, and I think I've done okay just to, you know, maintain the match fitness, yeah. you know. Um, but as you said, as the more and more games I play, the fitter I'll get, you know. I'm not going to lie, I'm, I'm not a ball player. I love to get, get in the box and score, yeah. you know. I've, I've done that for years and my goal uh, scoring record shows that. But, you know, I can't be pigeonholed just to that as well, you yeah. know. As I said, we've got players here who can get on the ball and play. Let them play and let me get forward and hopefully score some goals and link up with the front, pl front players. So, you know, you can't just rely on front players to score goals. You need goals all around the team. Um, and if I can add to that, then uh, hopefully I can in the next few games.